Ah, yes, our long, arduous journey through the world of radical simplification and operations on radicals has finally come to an end. Let's take a look at dividing as well as rationalizing the denominator. Well, the technique for dividing is going to be extraordinarily simple to the, or similar, sorry, to the technique for multiplying. Uh, so we want to divide 8 times the cube root of 9 divided by 4 times the cube root of 3. Well, we just simply divide the coefficients. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then we divide the radicals. So we take uh, cube root 9 divided by cube root 3. 9 over 3 is 3. That's it. Here's the rule written out in one heck of a large format, okay? But it's, it's actually just straightforward if you just break it down into little parts. If I have a coefficient m over a coefficient n, that breaks down into m divided by n. If I have a radical with a radicand a and a radicand divided by a radicand b, well, that just breaks down into a single radical a over b. And one of the crucial things here is that the k in both cases must be the same. It's always the same index. That's vital. Okay, we have the same kind of fancy math language at the bottom. k is just any natural number, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. a, b, m, and n are just real numbers, just any number will do, as long as we restrict some things. a has to be non-negative, and b has to be greater than 0. If k is even. And we should also note, in fact, that b cannot be 0, because if b is 0, we're dividing by 0. And n cannot be 0, because if we're, n is 0, we're dividing by 0. And that's a big no-no. OK. So we'll try to divide the following. Uh, root 24x squared divided by root 3x. Well, we have no coefficients to divide, so now we just simply combine these two things into a single radical. 24x squared divided by 3x, 24 over 3, that's 8. x squared divided by x is x, so we now have root 8x. Can I simplify this? Well, yes, I can. Um, this can be broken down into 4 times 2x. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2x is the square root of 2x. Next, rationalizing the denominator. Okay, well, way back in the olden days, before calculators, dividing by square root of 5 or some other radical was very difficult to do by hand. Now, now don't just take my word on it. Try it. Take 2 divided by the square root of 5. That's 2 divided by 2.23606977, and do it by hand. No, no, I mean, seriously, try it. It's completely, totally impractical. It's just, it's going to take you a half an hour, and you'll, and most people, myself included, would make an error somewhere. So it's much easier to multiply by approximate values of radicals. That, that's still easy to do by hand. So try 2 times the square root of 5, and you'll see that that's just actually pretty straightforward. So techniques were developed to make the denominator rational and move the radical into the numerator. This resulted in a standard way of writing radicals in fraction form, and we always write the radical in the numerator of a fraction. This is what we call simplified. So if we want to rationalize the denominator, there are two main techniques. First, when you're dealing with, say, a root 7 in the denominator, you can simply multiply this by root 7 over root 7. Well, what happens now? Well, 5 times root 7 gives you, well, 5 root 7. And what happens in the denominator? That's 2 times root 7 times root 7. Well, why did that help? Because root 7 times root 7 is 7. So now we have 5 root 7 over 2 times 7, which is 14. And notice now I have no radical in the denominator. The second technique for multiplying uh, here so that you end up without a, radic er, without a radical in the denominator is called multiplying by the conjugate. The conjugate of the denominator. So here's an example. 
we're going to take 9 over root 3 plus 4, and we're actually going to be able to move that radical into the denominator. Here's how. We'll rewrite it. And now we're going to multiply by this strange thing, root 3 minus 4 over root 3 minus 4. Notice first off I'm allowed to do this multiplication because I'm just multiplying by 1 over here. Now, root 3 minus 4 versus root 3 plus 4, that's called the conjugate. The conjugate is really the, just the same binomial except the plus or minus has switched. The sign in between the two terms is switched. Okay, so what does this give us? Well, 9 times root 3 is 9 root 3. 9 times 4, that's 36, so we got negative 36. And what happens in our, our denominator? Well, this is going to be interesting. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Not right there. Root 3 times negative 4, that's negative 4 root 3. 4 times root 3 is plus 4 root 3. And then 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Look what happened. I have negative root 4 root 3 and positive 4 root 3. Boom. They're gone. And all I'm left with now, well, in the numerator is the same thing, 9 root 3 minus 36. And the denominator? It's just 3 minus 16, which is negative 13. And so now I've been able to rewrite this original fraction without a radical in the denominator. This is called rationalizing the denominator. And the technique is called multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. You'll see a few examples of these in your textbook, and they've, they've got a couple examples that are well written, actually, in, in this section.